for now. Let's just focus on beating the Shadow Bolts. And as long as this event puts me in a playing field, I don't think we've got anything to worry about. Oh, it puts you on a playing field, all right. Ah! Amogus. Welcome to my channel. I'm gonna be all up in those feet. My Little Pony Equestria Girls Friendship Games. This one, this one is weird. If you're wondering as to why this video in particular took so long to make, well, this movie is, is odd and confusing. This movie is the third installment in the My Little Pony Equestria Girls spinoff series and is one of the most mixed movies I've reviewed in the Equestria Girls series by far on this channel. And if you haven't seen the other two videos on my channel covering the Equestria Girls series, I would suggest that you watch those first before watching this one because there's a lot of context and a lot of things that I said in those previous videos that will apply to this video. Now, where do I lay on the spectrum on whether or not I think this is a good movie or not? Well, let's get into it, shall we? Here are my thoughts on My Little Pony Equestria Girls Friendship Games. And oh boy, do I have a lot of them. I got your text, Rainbow Dash. Did something come through the portal? Is Equestrian Magic on the loose? So the film opens up with Sunset Shimmer rushing to the girls to see what's going on because she got an urgent text from Rainbow Dash just like the other girls did. So they decide to meet up in front of the school. Now what was the reason why Rainbow Dash decided to send an urgent text to the group chat? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because it was about a broken guitar string and she wanted to flex on her fans? Hey yo, you think Rainbow Dash played the guitar riff from Make It Stop? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm doing this shit. I'm living this shit for real. What a cunt. Oh yeah, also Sunset has a new outfit this time. I saw that a lot of people when researching for this movie didn't like like this outfit change when the movie was first released. And to that I say, why? As we established in the last film, Sunset has shed her skin in a sense. Sunset's now a changed person. She is her own individual and has seen the error in her ways. Sunset adopting this new outfit really does put her character in this new arc. There's that one music video that I didn't address in the Rainbow Rocks video because I just, I just didn't have time. But it really established this point even further that Sunset wanted to put her past behind her. With the symbolic imagery in this music video, and also if you pay attention to the lyrics close enough, you'll see what I'm talking about. And although yes, this song and music video may seem corny, if you view it in a spoken word kind of sense, or a poem, it establishes where she's been those past two movies, and why she's adopted this new look in a sense. Or, hear me out on this one, the animators just wanted to put her in a different outfit, because it looks pretty. Just, just maybe. That's the reason why she has this new outfit. Outfit. Now, if you ask me, I would have put her in some good old Rick Owens. But anyways, we then see a mysterious figure come off of a bus to investigate the portal at Canterlot High. Gee, I wonder who that could be. Sense of Shimmer then tries to chase this unknown figure, but it turns out this other person was just a little bit too good at Mirror's Edge Parkour. And then they just escape on the bus. Who was that? Who was that indeed, Sunset? Well, it turns out that- Oh, god oh, damn it. <laughs> Oh, I have to talk about this now. Good lord. All right, it's time for me to get my thoughts on yeah. this. Um, I mean, it makes sense. No, okay, let me just start from, let me just start from the beginning. Okay, if you hadn't seen Rainbow Rocks, at the end of the second Equestria Girls movie, they revealed that there is a human version of Twilight, which makes sense. We've established that there are multiple copies of the same ponies or people, and just in a different dimension, okay? I can go with that. What I cannot go with on the other hand is why did it take this long to introduce this new character? Now I understand that this is a new movie and they at least teased it before this movie, but I don't know. Something feels off about this, but I don't know. Also, if this human Twilight exists, where the hell is human Sunset Shimmer? Doesn't she have a human counterpart? Cause you know, she's not actually human. She's a horse. So then the credits play and I don't give a shit. We then come back 
respect to Twilight making a device that will be sadly unfortunately important to this movie. But regardless, we then go back to Sunset addressing the girls in the library about what happened earlier. Do you think she came through the portal from Equestria? No, I'm pretty sure I would have noticed that. I think she was from over here. Well, that's a relief. The last thing we need is another magical so-and-so bent on world domination coming over from Equestria. You fucking cheeky cunt. At least Sunset's okay with it this time. Seeing as how they got off a bus from the city and got back on a bus headed to the city, I'll bet they go to... Crystal Prep. Who is Crystal Prep? Yep. With the friendship game starting tomorrow, they'd totally try to prank us by defacing the Wonder Colt statue. Why would anyone take a bus all the way from the city for that? Because the Crystal Prep Shadow Bolts are our biggest rivals? Again, who? Because that's just what the students at Crystal Prep would do. Because even though they beat us in everything, soccer, tennis, golf, they still have to gloat. Seems kind of silly to me. You know what else is silly? The pacing in this movie. Who are the Shadow Bolts? What is Crystal Prep? Friendship games? Tomorrow? This movie is moving so fast and it's only been seven minutes? <laughs> Seven minutes! All right, movie. Jesus. They are cramming so much information within the short amount of time that it's insane. But okay, sure. So I guess you think the friendship games are silly too. Well, it's not like we'll be fighting the powers of evil magic. No, we'll be fighting against a school full of meanies. Not everything has to be magical to be important. This movie cannot be serious right now. Are you fucking for real right now? <laughs> The fucking balls on that statement, Fluttershy. Oh my god. The irony in that statement is insane. <laughs> yeah, come back to me in an hour. Let's see from an hour from now, you're saying the exact same shit you're telling Sunset to her face. Christ almighty. The friendship game's supposed to be about our two schools getting along? Well, it's kind of hard to get along with someone who beats you at everything. Not anymore. This time, things are gonna be different. What do you mean? Oh, you'll find out. Oh, they'll be different, all right. The difference in whether or not I should turn off this godforsaken movie before it's too late. Oh, wait, it was already too late when I purchased the Blu-ray on Amazon. Whoops. We then cut back to, oh, mommy. Give me them thick thighs. Man, fuck the thighs. I want the feet. God, oh, them grippers. <laughs> so anyways. <laughs> So Celestia and Luna explain that the friendship games are important to the school, yada yada yada, who, who fucking cares? Then Rainbow Dash sings a song, moving on! And the girls are like, oh wow Rainbow Dash, you're so awesome and cool and I love that song that wasn't dog shit! Then Rainbow Dash is all like, I know, I am that bitch. Hold your pussies, ladies. Yes, Slay Queen! Then Luna comes on screen and is like, hey bitches, you got this shit under control? God forbid something magical happens during the game. That'd be too exciting. Also, Sunset, you're from that stupid pony land. Uh, you're in charge of figuring this shit out because I can't be fucking ass. They don't pay me enough for this shit. And then Sunset's like, I'll do my best. Anybody have any guesses what the events are going to be? Pie eating? Cake eating? <gasps> Pie cake eating? They won't even let us see what they're doing to the field. You'd think they'd at least tell competitors what they're competing in. The jokes are writing themselves. Like, I don't even need to do anything. Just let the movie play out. Then Sunset's all like, hey guys, I gotta go be responsible for a second. See you guys later. And then leaves. We then cut to Sunset trying to figure out why Rainbow Dash ponied up for no reason without playing her guitar. And you know, I actually like this scene. Because you know why? It's a scene with a character I actually like in these movies. Wow, what a concept. Hey Twilight, haven't heard back from you yet. I guess you must be pretty busy with your role as princess, but I could really use your advice right now. You see, I've been given the job of keeping magic under control here at CHS, even though I still haven't quite wrapped my head around it. And now, after seeing Rainbow Dash pony up the way she did, it makes me think our magic might be changing. Everyone is looking to me to figure things out, and I really don't want to let them down. But I'm not sure I have enough experience with friendship magic to solve this. 
since it's still been through a lot and she's trying to learn, learns the ins and outs of this new magic that her and her friends have now developed. She's trying to rely on Twilight for answers, but at some point, she has to find the answers herself. Also, Twilight's fighting an evil, crazy, time-traveling bitch right now, so probably that's why she's not reaching your voicemails at the moment. It's just... Too bad it's not in a good movie, but we move on nonetheless. We think of the Crystal Prep where Twilight explains the Spike. I know there's another version of Spike that doesn't talk and it's just an actual dog, but nonetheless, she explains to Spike that she built a device that can capture all the mysterious magic that's been happening around Canterlot High. She says that if she captures enough energy from Canterlot High, she'll be guaranteed her independent study program at Everton. You know, I just realized recording this that, man, Twilight sure is, um, I'm gonna put it in the nicest way possible. Is an incel? Perhaps a femcel, if you will? Yeah, no, they just copied Twilight from the first episode of Friendship is Magic and applied her here, but she's a human now, which I think works in this case scenario. It's probably not as good as the show, but at least it's a blueprint they can copy off of that works, or at least worked in the past, rather than just having no character at all. But nonetheless, oh, new character, Dean Cadence, Twilight's supposed sister-in-law, walks in the room and tells Twilight, hey, Principal Sense wants to see you. Also, can you stop being an incel? All you do is supposedly live in a janitor's closet all day and just be a fucking nerd emoji. <laughs> Go outside and touch grass, please, Twilight. Then Twilight's all like, um, actually, the independent study is what I perfectly need. I can actually just look at hot, sexy anime hushbondos on the internet, Dean Cadence. Fucking Jesus. Then Twilight sings the song, I... But after Twilight sings about wanting more, she then meets up with Dean Cadence in Principal Cinch's office with also her brother, Shining Armor, as an alumni to persuade Twilight. And then we meet- Principal Cinch thought he could provide some unique perspective. Perspective on what? Why the friendship games, of course. <sighs> Principal Cinch. I'm just gonna say it now. This is one of the worst villains in the Equestria Girls franchise by far. In execution, this character is boring. But we'll get to that later, you'll see. Principal Sinch then explains to Twilight that they need to win the friendship games because Crystal Prep has a reputation to uphold. Then Shining Armor is like, Twilight, you could represent the school. It's really important. Yeah, but why? If you guys win every four years, then why does it matter if Twilight should be on the team or not? That doesn't make any sense. Just for brownie points? Using Principal Sinch his own logic, wouldn't it just be fine if Twilight didn't join the team anyways? You guys are gonna win. You guys are gonna win regardless of what happens, so this doesn't make any sense. Why is Twilight in this room? And then Principal Sin sends Dean Cadence and Shining Armor to go bang in the office room. I don't know. And then while the two are banging in the office room, Principal Sin then pulls out Twilight's acceptance letter to Everton, but just blackmails her? She just blackmails her. And she's all like, Twilight. Twilight, if you don't join the team for the friendship games, you won't get into Everton. But if you win the friendship games, I'll make sure you get into Everton. Like, I know there's a lot of plausible deniability I have to have with the Question Girls villains, but like this one is just like, there's no way around it. It's just blackmailing. <laughs> with the other ones, it's like giant theatrical monster girls or like singing demon seahorse ladies. This one is just like straight up just a crime, a crime that happens in real life. <laughs> But anyways, but after Twilight obviously says yes, she starts packing her things and telling Spike to get in the bag. But Twilight, isn't that animal abuse? I said, get in the bag. Then as Twilight's about to get on the bus, we get introduced to the Shadow Bolts. And wow, I sure do hope these characters get enough screen time and development to flesh out their characters. It would be a shame if that didn't happen. By the way, what was the girl's name who just yelled at Twilight just now? I shit you not when I tell you, I don't know any of these characters names except for like sugarcoat that's it throughout the whole movie so that's just what five or six characters added to the i don't give a shit about you unless you're sunset and maybe twilight list moving on i think it's the girls playing my intro song then twilight finally arrives at chs with the rest of the shadow bolts and principal cinch for the friendship games until all of a sudden hi hello uh good <laughs> twilight Oh my god, we're still doing this? Three movies in? Give it up, Hasbro. Oh my god. 
Mike. <laughs> right, of course. We'll totally win with you here. Nope, nope. I'm I'm not even gonna let this scene play. Thankfully, he's only in one more scene after this. Thank God. We then cut back to the fashion demon putting on clothes on everybody. When all of a sudden, Rarity's magic gets sucked away by Twilight's opium chain. I don't fucking know. And then Twilight breaks in. And then Principal Cinch is like, Ah, yes, Twilight, my student who goes to my school and not here. Let's go check you in, Twilight. And then Celestia says, I didn't know Twilight had a twin sister. God, this bitch is stupid. Stupidly hot. Let me get that ass, shawty. She doesn't. That Twilight is obviously the Twilight from this world since it couldn't possibly be the Twilight from the Pony World since the Twilight from the Pony World doesn't go to Crystal Prep or glasses. I'm trying to make a video here, movie. Like, uh, why? Why? Okay, first off, number one, fuck you, movie, for stealing my jokes. Number two, you can't just write off plot holes because the crazy zany pink hair bitch knows everything and breaks the fourth wall. I get it, that's what she does. But when it's this apparent and everybody is so fucking oblivious, even though it's clearly not Twilight, makes it annoying. And while I was doing research for this movie, I kid you not, and the My Little Pony Equestria Girls Friendship Games bloopers. The fucking bloopers. They explain why Pinkie Pie knows so much about the plot, and it's because you're seeing on screen now, it's not actually human Pinkie Pie. It's the pony Pinkie Pie from the show Friendship is Magic in her place. So that's why she knows human Twilight is not the real pony Twilight. Again, this is in the fucking bloopers. Oh my god! And before a couple people come and attack me for it's just a joke, I know it's a joke. The animators did this for fun and realizing nobody's gonna probably see this. It's in the fucking bloopers on the DVD. Who cares? But that still doesn't change the fact that you just can't write off people's stupidity in a joke. People are so oblivious that it's not Twilight. They walk past and not question to themselves, why is Twilight wearing glasses? Why is Twilight wearing a crystal prep uniform? And this is one of my biggest problems with this movie. There's sometimes questions that I have, and in some cases, the movie has, that just don't get answered. And what does Celestia have to say after Pinky's crazy outburst? <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, that's what I thought. Then Principal Sense just yells at Twilight some more. God, I wish this villain was actually interesting enough for me to actually care. Let me meet up with the girls in the hallway and what? What's this? <gasps> a sunset shimmer scene? No way! Guys, I can't believe this is happening. A sunset shimmer scene is happening. Now I can actually start paying attention to what's happening on screen. For real, I really do like this scene because you already know it's a sunset shimmer scene. And number two, it explains her frustrations as to why she's frustrated with this world's magic she doesn't have any experience in this type of magic and also she doesn't want to lose the trust she built up in the last movie that she worked really hard for and then applejack and rarity say this to sunset you're the one who helped us understand what was going on with the sirens remember i guess but twilight was the one who really figured out what we needed to defeat them but don't you remember darling what we needed to defeat them was you this this is what I want in these movies. I'm not asking for overtly complicated plots in My Little Pony Equestria Girls. I'm asking for this, a coherent storyline with characters that I actually care about. Then after that, Sunset then walks outside to the statue to where Twilight then sucks the energy out of Sunset's hand through the statue and then quickly runs away. Then Sunset touches the portal to then realize that, that the portal is now closed and that she's on her own now. I mean, I don't think you had a choice anyway in this matter, but the portal closing just confirms this. And since it's all like, well, guys, the portal's closed. And Racist. So like, what do you mean the goddamn portal's closed? And then since it's like, shut the fuck up. You literally are no help to me whatsoever. Then as the girls meet up in the gymnasium to meet their competition, Sunset then berates Twilight and starts questioning her about what her plans are. Then the shadow boats start talking shit. I don't care. Then Twilight meets up with Pinkie Pie. Oh, hi, I'm Twilight. I know. You look just like my friend. Her name is Twilight, too. That's uh, weird. What's that? It's sort of a spectrometer. I built it to track EM frequencies, but it can also contain anomalies. 
<laughs> fucking Pinky's face in the sea. Jesus Christ. That is a face of a thousand voices screaming all at once. It measures things. Like the party? Okay, movie, you got me. Then Thick Mama starts talking. Sorry, guys, I'm just bricked up by this Thick Mama talking. Celestia? More like Celestia, these balls in your mouth. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. Then Pinkie Pie and Twilight bring out cannons into the gymnasium. And then Pinkie Pie makes it a real rave that's ready to rave! <laughs> I'm ready to rave! Now this is definitely a certified Gabe 3 moment. Double O rave! Then after Pinkie Pie makes this a real raver party. I'm a raver, 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 raver. Then Twilight's fake opium chain starts to suck the energy out of Pinkie Pie, and then she becomes not opium pilled anymore. R.I.P. Double O Pinkie Raver, you will be missed. Twilight's pendant then summons a portal underneath the bleachers. Uh, shouldn't you take this off by now? I mean, a normal person would take it off, but you know that. That's just me. And then Principal Buzzkill comes in, stops the opium rave, and then gives a boring speech. Yippee. God, I don't care about this character at all. So then Pinkie Pie meets up with the rest of the girls, saying that her magic got drained when she fired the cannons with Twilight. Then Santa asks, what do you mean the magic drained from you? And Pinkie's like, I don't know. And then Applejack is like, hey, where's Twilight again? And then Twilight has vanished. You know, Applejack and Santa are the only real people who are asking valid questions in this movie. Also, can I have a quick chat with you guys? You know, we're about halfway through this movie already and I don't care. I just don't care enough. Like, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm giving it a fair chance. Let's see if it picks up speed. But right now, the movie is, um, it's certainly a movie, all right. Also, with this movie's title being called Friendship Games, there sure aren't any friendship games happening on my screen right now, and we're only halfway through the movie. God damn. Then finally, after like what seems like an eternity, 40 minutes into the movie, we finally get the friendship games. And then they play a song. God damn it. <laughs> they can't do it. They can't stop themselves. So after that dumb song they just played, Crystal Prep won the first round of the friendship games. The girls hug Sunset for at least trying. And then Flash Sentry comes on screen for his second and last time you will ever see him in this movie. Thank the Lord. We then cut to best character, best character, best character, best character, best character. Oh, sorry, sorry. I got distracted there for a second. What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, the plot of this movie. So Twiggy, Biggie, and best character talk about snuggling animals into their backpacks. I mean, it's a good Twilight scene. That's really it. Also, Twilight's chain pendant thing opens up a bunch of portals and sucks the energy out of Fluttershy and Spike hops through one of them. And now Kathy Westlock can get a paycheck. What's your favorite pony overall? Like, uh... I actually like Fluttershy. Yeah. After seeing a whole bunch of dimensional rifts open up in front of you and seeing your dog talk for the first time, Twilight rightfully so says, Why did you run away like that? Um, oh, I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with the glowing girl, or the hole in space, or my talking dog. And then two seconds later, it's just now over it. Yeah, weird, right? Are you okay? How do you feel? What happened? Where did you go? Hey, one question at a time! This is pretty new to me, too. Sorry. Look, all I'm saying is, if my dog started talking for the first time, I think I'd ask him the most important question of all. A question everybody wants to know. What that dog be doing? Then, oh god, Prince... Jesus. Then the not villain comes on screen. I honestly oh don't care. God. This character just bores me to death. All she says is Twilight spy on those girls that were nice to you or else your application is in the balance and then just leaves. God, this is a lame villain. We have like 30 minutes left on the shot clock and this villain has not made an impression on me at all. Please do something interesting. It's like she's not even there half the time. Matter of fact, she's not. Twilight is more of a villain than Principal Sinch. And she's supposed to be the secondary protagonist. But fuck it, we ball, I guess. Then Fluttershy meets up with the other girls to tell them what happened near the bushes with Twilight. Sunset being the only sensible person in this movie is starting to put the puzzle pieces together and figures out that just maybe, just maybe, Twilight might be the culprit behind all this magic stealing. And also the reason why the portals closed. So the actual real Twilight is not available at this moment. Cause she on some other shit. Yo, yo guys, look, look guys. It's me zoning out while watching this movie. And then they reveal that the second round of the games is just archery. Okay, the short track, which is just
just roller derby? Okay. All right. And then finally, we have motocross? Wait, what? Huh? First of all, whose idea was it to have the kids ride motorbikes? Second of all, are these kids even old enough to drive? Who was making up these friendship games? What happened in between the last four years and to now to where we have the kids riding motorbikes? This makes no sense. Hello? It takes them 45 minutes to get to the friendship games, the title of the movie, and it makes zero sense at all. How did we go from soccer, tennis, golf, to then all this crazy shit. You know, as important as the friendship games is to this movie, I feel like this is done so half-assed that they're like, okay, we're gonna have a song number for the game. Well, why not just show the first round? No, we need to make it a song number. Okay, the second round, um, uh, fuck it, have the kids ride motorbikes. Fuck yeah. Like what? Like this movie has some serious pacing issues. You know, maybe instead you could have had the kids prepare for the friendship games instead of being like oh it's a mystery what the activities will be or you know actually have the friendship games throughout the whole movie from beginning to end but whatever i guess we roll on so the second round of the friendship game starts and for the most part the games aren't even that bad like i don't understand why we couldn't have this spread out throughout the entire movie it's at least some action compared to the nothing we've had throughout the majority of the the movie so far so as chs has the upper hand on crystal prep so far that one girl whose name i can't remember because she's so forgettable starts yelling at twilight to shoot the arrow properly so they can advance in the games and then applejack gets sick and tired of this and then just walks over to twilight and says hey here's some actually helpful advice so twilight hits the target she hugs applejack and then she sucks the energy out of applejack for being honest wow it's not like this happened four times before during the movie whoa hold on guys for a close second there I thought it wasn't gonna suck Applejack's energy out of her body. Thank God this movie sure is predictable. Luckily for my two brain cells, this movie's got me covered. So after Twilight's chain sucks the energy out of Applejack, it unleashes a giant tentacle plant monster and everything goes haywire. Random portals start appearing out of thin air. Uh, okay. I still have no idea how this pendant works, by the way, but fuck it. Then the plant monsters start attacking the students and then Rainbow Dash goes to save Sunset before she gets attacked by the plant monster. <laughs> I hope Rainbow Dash can save me from this experience that I'm having right now, Sunset. Watching this dumb movie. By the way, Rainbow Dash is totally not cheating in any way, shape, or form. But then since that shimmer just crosses the finish line, Twilight finally closes the pendant. So after that fiasco, Rainbow Dash is all like, we won! And then Sunset says, yeah, you dumb moron, but you know, we all could have died. People could have died while we competed in these stupid friendship games. And rightfully goes off about what just happened and then twilight's like um excuse me and then rainbow dash is all like don't worry we don't know how this magic works either and then twilight's stupid pendant sucks rainbow dash's energy as rainbow dash is walking towards twilight <laughs> rainbow dash is not even being loyal in this part of the scene but whatever and then sunset goes off on twilight rightfully so oh, can't forget principal cinch because she's in this movie by the way just hiding behind the bleachers seeing this all unfold because we need to have some forced climax at the end of the movie and then since it just absolutely tears twilight a new asshole again rightfully so like okay i get it like i'm torn on this scene on one hand sunset is right the writers clearly want you to side with sunset but on the other hand i see what the writers are trying to do with twilight but like god damn can twilight just be a little bit more smart can twilight Twilight be a little bit smarter. I'm not even saying Twilight can't make mistakes, but like, god damn. Sunset has a point. She's the one who put her friends in danger and her own school. I like when a main 
main protagonist fucks up because it makes them believable. It makes them relatable. What I don't like is that Twilight is pulling double duty as a secondary protagonist to Sunset, but also being the main villain of this movie because Principal Cinch is nowhere to be found and is boring. Now, you could say that this movie is great for having a non-clear-cut villain. You don't know who's right and who's necessarily wrong in any case scenario. On the other hand, this movie not having a clear defined villain harms this movie and just ruins the plot. Like, who am I rooting for? Am I rooting for Sunset? Because she is the main character of Equestria Girls and that she's been right this whole time? Or am I rooting for Twilight? Someone who is literally being blackmailed as we currently speak by the principal nonetheless? Someone who has been shown to have likable qualities about them? Went around other people who actually care for her and want her to succeed? I don't know. I don't. No. I guess both. Oh, and just before we move on, Principal Cinch gets mad. Sunset then blames herself that the magic is all because of her, which is great character building for Sunset, but too bad it's in this stinky movie. This awful, stinky movie. Oh, by the way, the friendship games are still continuing because Principal Cinch would rather have her students die on the battlefield to uphold Crystal Prep's legacy. And because oh Crystal Prep has a reputation oh. for my fucking cares because i fucking don't which then brings me to the finale of this movie then since that's all like no i probably shouldn't have said those things i probably shouldn't have been that mean to twilight um yes you should have and then applejack is all like let's prove them crystal preppers that we're not traitors yay i guess yippee and then the song hey guys as i'm recording this um i just want to say i know this is random as fuck but like as I'm watching the movie and recording voiceover for the review, I would just like to say that my chair has given up on this movie. My chair has already in, been in bad shape. Um, I don't know if I can show some examples from Twitter or whatever. Please follow me on Twitter at BeatFox. Uh, I, I make great tweets. But see, it's fucking falling apart. It's falling apart about me talking about this dumbass movie. Fuck you, movie! Oh. Anyways, back to the review, I guess. I don't... I don't fucking know. Now, I know a lot of people like this song, and if you like it, that's okay. You can like this song, but I'm gonna say it right here, right now. I don't care. Principal Sense sucks, the Shadow Bolts suck. I, I don't care anymore. I just don't. Then Twilight absorbs the magic. Uh, oh. And God, does that look painful. And then she transforms into, oh no. What is that? Not again. I can't believe they did it again. What the fuck? So Twilight turns into Midnight Sparkle and then says this. <laughs> you were right. I didn't understand magic before, but I do now. <laughs> Do you really understand magic now? Cause I don't think you do. And this is what I'm talking about. This movie has led to this moment. Remember in Rainbow Rocks, we had a nice story with decent villains, with the Rainbooms versus the Dazzlings. Wh where has that gone? Where has that same energy gone? We are now devolving back into the quality of the first Equestria Girls movie. And I guess this movie does a lot to like pay homage or make reference references to that said movie and like i don't know if that's the movie you want to be making references to but anyways midnight sparkle just starts wreaking havoc people start to fall and are hanging on for dear life and she starts to make pocket dimensions to equestria and now you may be asking yourself how does this magic work i can't tell you shit but that one day I also want you guys to keep in mind that throughout this whole movie, Twilight has been absorbing the friendship magic of all the main six, right? Okay. okay. She absorbs the magic. She then turns into Midnight Sparkle. My question is this. If the magic comprised in that trinket is all friendship magic, which is supposed to be good magic, why does Twilight Sparkle turn evil? Why does Twilight not turn good? You want to know why? I can't, I can't, I can't. 
The movie doesn't know which way it wants to go. And then in turn, you end up with stuff like this. This finale is a mess. And then the Shadow Bolts start helping people. I don't care. But, 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 but. <sighs> After everything I just said, we get this. This isn't the way. I know you feel powerful right now. Like you can have everything you want. I've been where you are. I've made the same mistake you're making. I put on a crown and just like you, I was overwhelmed by the magic it contained. I thought it could get me everything I wanted. Oh, you're wrong. Unlike you, I can have everything I want. No, you can't. Even with all that magic and power, you'll still be alone. True magic comes from honesty, loyalty, laughter, Kindness. I understand you, Twilight, and I want to show you the most important magic of all. The magic of friendship. And that, that right there, shows glimpses of what this movie and this franchise can be. I don't know, that's just my thoughts on it. This movie is so frustrating to watch. But since it absorbs the power of the main six to then become Daydream Shimmer? Jesus Christ has, bro. You gotta sell them toys, don't you? And tells Midnight Sparkle there's another way. You know, this is all great stuff. It's just that it only took me an hour to get to this point, and the movie's almost over. Then Daydream Shimmer and Midnight Sparkle then have a top five anime moments of all time fight in the middle of the schoolyard and start throwing laser beams at each other? What am I even watching anymore? I shit you not, when my friend first saw this for the first time when we watched this movie a while back, he was so confused and thought, why are they having a Dragon Ball Z fight in MLB? I don't fucking know, but fuck, this is so stupid. It is so ridiculous that Midnight Sparkle and Daydream Shimmer are having a beam struggle in my little pony equestria girls <laughs> that is just like fuck it fuck it and these are the only two characters i care about anyways so who cares at this point <laughs> And that, that right there, is why when it can be, emphasis on can be, this franchise can be decent. I'm not saying it's a Martin Scorsese masterpiece we're talking about here, it's My Little Pony, of all things, but it at least can be watchable up to this point. Then Sunset and Twilight are now in limbo? Take my hand, Twilight. Let me show you there's another way, just like someone once did for me. All right, movie, you got me. You got me, movie, you win. That scene right there makes me sitting here for almost about an hour talking about pony girls. Worth it, makes it worth it. Sunset being the one to reach out to Twilight and offer her hand, and not only to show her another way, to show her that she was wrong, that only seeking power and ambition just because isn't the way. Except in Twilight's case, it's knowledge. She wants to know more, but then but then on our quest to do so, she shuts out everybody who she can form a relationship relationship with and have new experiences with and have new memories with and have fun instead of just working all the time working all the time to be the best that you can be and that's great and all but you also have to realize that people and in this case twilight needs to have a personal life all in all this moment is great does it make any sense to how we got to this point no but at least i'm glad they had this moment and that the movies all come full circle good shit good shit movie Sorry, I didn't mean for any of this to happen. I know, and going by my own experiences, they'll forgive you.
Oh yeah, what was I talking about again? Oh, the movie. God damn it. So then Principal Sense comes back on screen and is like, you should forfeit the game, Celestia. It's rigged. You guys were clearly cheating, even though I was gonna cheat too. Your students have magic and therefore I should win the games. Let my school win the games. I'm gonna bring this up with the school board. And then everybody just looks at her like she has turds hanging out of her mouth. And then she just leaves. What a great character. What a great villain. 10 out of 10 villain. Also, what makes you think people are gonna go after CHS. They don't even come to the school of there's two nuclear explosions that happen back to back. We have established in these three movies, the school board, local authorities, and the government, they do not care. You're not doing nothing, lady. Then, Princess Celestia Heat Anthro version hot sex free Punjabi Playboy 1080 just says that everybody wins their friendship games since, you know, they didn't get to finish them. Twilight then talks to Dean Cadence about not wanting to do the independent study program, that she's done being being a loner that she's done being a loner 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 and decides that she's not ready for it just yet but then dean cadence offers twilight to switch schools to, to canterlot high where the main six are then sunset's all like guys i figured out the magic the magic happens when we be ourselves <gasps> you don't say sunset i was so busy waiting for someone else to give me the answers that i gave up looking for them myself I'm sure there will be more magical problems that pop up in this world, but like Applejack said, Princess Twilight has her own problems to worry about in Equestria. We can't expect her to always be around to help us. That's an ironic statement, Sunset. That sure is an ironic statement. Damn, bitch, it was that fast? Then Celestia's like, hey guys, we got a new student, it's Twilight, who would've guessed? Then all the girls hug, and then... That's it. That's the movie. There sure is nothing else. There sure is no post credit scene. Where Twilight- Hey Sunset, I got your booty call. Wait, what? Wait a second, why the fuck is there two of me? Impressive. But I also have a surprise for you! Hey, yeah! Well, we're here once again. Um, wow. Just wow. You want to know my thoughts on this movie as a whole? In just one small clip. All I have to say is this. Sunset and Twilight's backs must be really strong because they carried the fuck out of this movie. And I don't even know if that's 100% true because some of the Twilight stuff had me scratching my head. What happened? Like, how did we go from this to this? And I know a lot of you people really, really like this movie. And if you like it, that's fine. But I'm telling you, from my perspective, I don't like this movie. I don't like this movie at all. Man, I, I don't know where to begin with this movie. I'm gonna put it like this. We are once again at a point where I don't care about the plot, but I care about Sunset Shimmer and to a certain extent, Twilight. When I tell you that this movie was frustrating and boring for me to watch. It is an understatement. I had to watch this movie, including while I'm editing this clip right now and this whole video. Like what, five times now? But then other than that, it's just a forgettable movie. You know what this movie feels like? It feels like filler. It feels like a filler movie that they made to just get it out the way so Hasbro can keep selling toys and keep the Equestria Girls series going. The plot doesn't make any sense, the characters I don't care for, and while the animation is good, the singing, and just overall quality has risen up with the Equestria Girls in this movie because I will say this, this is one of the better animated Equestria Girls movies I've seen so far. But like the saying goes, you can't polish a turd. And you can make all these improvements here and there and make the music better or, or make the animation look more pretty. It always comes down to the story and the characters. And guess what? This movie don't got that. It don't got that at all. Except for one eh, 
and a half characters. But other than the sunset and twilight scenes, sometimes in this movie, this movie sucks. This movie overall is just a big disappointment in my books. But the character building with sunset and twilight in this movie were fantastic. Sunset finally becoming a leader and figuring out that she doesn't need twilight to help her in every step of the way and it all coming back full circle where now sunset's offering the hand of friendship to twilight when it was the other way around in the first movie and hey look i can't discredit these writers too much because this new twilight while i did have a couple problems with her i actually did enjoy a fair bit of her scenes when it wasn't poorly written i overall thought that she was a likable main character or at least secondary protagonist a secondary protagonist to sunset shimmer their scenes overall with a few exceptions were great and although their climactic battle towards the end of the film was completely stupid and made no sense and ended in 10 seconds it was still a little bit satisfying to watch but that's just me geez i sure do hope they don't mess up this character development in the next equestria girls film because that would be a shame right no i don't know whatever but yeah that's it that's it um i don't know how to end this video um <laughs> It never fucking ends! See you in the next video when I talk about I I I can't take it anymore. I need help. This is a this is a call for help, please. I I need to oh, Give me your toes. Yeah, give me them feet, bitch. Feet, feet, feet. I'm the fan. Shit, <laughs> 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 <laughs>